this is a bi-directional composite showing four lamina that are stacked on top of each other and when combined you end up with a represented volume element what we want to do is to show how to actually set up this model so that you can run simulations on them with a major focus on how to apply boundary conditions so that we can end up with simulations that look like this so for this second video we are going to focus only on how to set up the model for a uniaxial deformation in the x direction y direction and z direction if you're interested in this sort of things sit back and relax so that we can get started with this video what we have here is basically a stacking sequence of 0 90 90 and 0 degrees are shown here where the 0 lamina are on the outside and the 90 degree lamina are on the inside as shown here so the volume fraction of this represented volume element is 35.5 percent and the dimensions are 100 by 100 and 140 in the length direction the fiber diameter is 15 microns and have neglected the effect of an interface region if you want to see how this has actually been done i've made a video which shows how you build up this assembly to generate this virtual domain please this is a video that talks about that so go and look at that video first before you return to the second video in the series of rve modeling of pd composite which shows you what to do the first thing you need to do in applying the boundary condition is to identify the six surfaces as a nodal set so if you currently consider this system as this we need to identify the top surface which i will call here a y top nodal set we need to also identify the x front surface and also the z front surface there will also be other three surfaces on the hidden side of this rv there will be a boundary condition that fixes the system in the z back face direction so i've shown it as a roller support it's constrained so that it does not deform in the z axis there will also be another one on the x back which is at the back end and it will be constrained in the x direction and there will also be a y base uh, roller support which constrains the system in the y direction the idea here is that you're modeling a quadrant of a volumetric system that have been divided into eight different parts so this is just one quadrant of it and within that you're applying all these boundary conditions to begin your simulation now the next thing to think about as well is you need to isolate reference points that will be attached onto this domain and these reference points will be attached at specific points on the system so what we have here are these three reference points so on the x direction here we've got reference point one in the y direction we've got reference point two and in the x direction we've got reference point three so we are going to use them as anchor points to apply loading on the system for a universal x deformation for this system that already has pre-existing reinforcement in the back, z back direction, x back direction, and y base direction, for us to apply a Niagara extensor deformation, we just need to, on this reference point one, apply a displacement. And once we apply a displacement, we'll be asking it to output for us the displacement in the one direction and the reaction force in the y direction. And this is how you apply x axis tensile deformation. Now to constrain the deformation applied to this point to this x front phase we need a canonical equation and that's what the canonical equation will look like basically what it's saying is that whatever deformation you're going to experience in the front phase which is this minus whatever deformation you're going to get here will give you zero in other words the deformation of the x front phase will be equal to deformation of this reference point so we use an, a canonical equation with a future within a backup score star equation to go ahead and make that connection so if we consider the unix or y direction a similar thing as we did for the x tensor will be applicable the only thing here is that we are going to then focus transfer our loading on the reference point two where we apply a y axis tensile deformation y displacement here that pushes the system up and similar to what we did before we need to also include a canonical equation now we are displacing the system in the two direction which is the y axis direction linking the y top to this reference point two which is what we see here so this equation will again be implemented inside of Arcus to constrain the y top to deform equivalently as the deformation of the reference point two and then finally in the uniaxial z direction we will do a similar thing so now we're going to move to the reference point three and we're going to displace the system in the third axis in this direction and we are going to ask the simulation to give us the reaction force in the third axis and the displacement in the third axis. Remember, the third axis is the z-axis. And as well, we are going to kinematically link what's happening at reference point 3 to the z-front phase. And this is the equation that does 
than precisely for us. So with this, we have set the system up to be able to deform in the Z direction. So with all that, we are going to then go and set this up within Abacus to make sure we understand what is happening. If this is the kind of content that you like, please, I do encourage you to subscribe to this YouTube channel so that when contents like this are made, you'll be the first to see it. I also want to highlight that there is a CM videos insider group, which I regularly send every week newsletters talking about behind the scenes in CM videos and more about products that are available on the CM videos website. I also publish in this newsletter reflections from my perspective on a lot of computational modeling issues. If you are interested in this kind of thing, please do subscribe to newsletter. You'll also be able to read up to a hundred articles already published on that newsletter. Thank you. So here in Abacus, the first thing we're going to do, we already have the existing represented volume element. The first thing we're going to do is to look at the materials. So the material we have here is an e-glass fiber and a polypropylene system. So if we provide the properties for the e-glass, so it will have an elastic property of 75 e to power 9 and Poisson ratio of 0 0.2. Now the polypropylene would be, it's got an elastic behavior of 1.3. 08, 8, 9, and 0 0.4 as Poisson ratio and the plasticity of the system will be 40 e to power 6 and 0, 0.0 so we'll just look at an elastoplastic material model we we'll go back to the assembly module the first thing we then need to do is to create the nodal set so and under the nodal set what we need to do is we go back to the part section so under this section so we need to create the nodal set for all surfaces so we double click on this and say okay the top end here will be the Y top so with the Y top I just call it the Y top and I want to select what is on the top here but I'm going to switch this and just select this thing to faces okay and then I'll switch here to face by angle and then click done so if i hover around here it will select that surface and that's fine and then i'll do the same thing here so i'm going to call my x front face so with the x front face now i'm hovering around the front and it will select everything so this is why it's important to say i want to select my faces by angle and only surfaces alone so i'll do the same z front so with the z front i hover in front here and it will select everything on that front now, the next thing we need to do is to rotate this around so that we can get the Z back. So this becomes a Z back. And with the Z back, I'll hover around there and I'll select everything. And we'll do the same for the other section. So Y base, we'll do that. So that's the Y base. And then finally, we need to also do the X back. So we switch to the X back. And if you do that, so this is X back. And we hover around here and it selects everything so now with this if we go back to the isometric you know, view so it can then switch it to say set so if we select set it shows up now all the surfaces with different color identification factor showing you that all different and so we are happy we've got all the set set so after that we go to the assembly module and we create the reference point so with the within the assembly module if we switch here the reference points will go to reference so we've got a reference point at this corner like we wanted so we've got a reference point at that corner and then we've got a reference point at this corner okay and then within the same set module let's give them some descriptive names so our p1 you know for is what we want to call this one as a set so we'll do the same thing our p2 is what we'll call this as a set and then we'll go to our p3 our p3 is what we call this as a set okay okay so while we are still here let's create our boundary conditions and our boundary conditions here would be okay so i'm going to have my x back ruler as x back ruler as in this and with the x back ruler i'll go to sets and select the back only highlight where the back is and this i will then constrain only in the one direction so we'll do the same thing y base ruler so it will be Y base and it will be constrained in the two direction. And then finally, Z back ruler. So with the Z back ruler, so we constrain this in the third axis. So this way we have the boundary condition that we stated before that would look like this clearly represented. So now that we've got this template ready, so I can use it now and say, okay, I'm going to copy this model and call it BD Uniaxial X. 
Okay, so let's create a step. So our loading step. So let's call it a loading step. If static general should be acceptable. Now, so if we don't create here, so we've got the tension x as a loading step, and it will be connected to the reference point one and we are going to display the system in the one direction the length of the system in this direction is 100 so 10 percent of 100 is 10 so we put that and that gives us a displacement in that direction so our constraint equation so we need to think about our constraint equation so let's look at the constraint equation we'll attach it to this so our constraint equation would be one for the quotient of this and this will be minus one and the set name, we start with the x front set name, which is this, in the one degree direction, one degree direction, and reference point one is what we are doing. So basically, the loading applied to reference point one is connected to this system. So clearly now we need to create a history output for this. So, so reference point one history output, so that's what we want. And then we'll do continue. And with that, so we obviously are looking at reference point one. And we're looking at reaction force one and reaction and u1 displacement so those are the only two things that we need to then get the model going so we'll just do the same and create a bd uniaxial y for this so with the uniaxial y everything remains the same from the previous case except that this time around we apply a boundary condition on the system so this will be tension y and with tension y we use reaction point in the two case to work with that and our two direction will have to gain a load of 10 because in the y direction the system is 10 micron in length so we've got that then we need to connect the displacement of rp1 rp2 with the y top and to do that we use a constraint equation so we'll call it constraint equation and with the constraint equation we are saying okay one minus one the reaction force we are looking for here, the face is y top, and we are working with reaction reference point two in the two axis. Okay, so that connects that system to this point. And now finally, we also create a history output. So reaction point two history output is what we are looking for. And the set for doing that would be RF2 and U2. Okay, so that works out for that case so the final one is to use again this model to create a copy and we'll call it bd um, uniaxial z so in the z direction and what we would have here would be a similar thing our loading this time around would be tension in the z axis and it'll be attached to a loading step and that loading step will be to reaction point three and in the third axis the total length is 140 in the third axis so we use just 14 in this instance so the system is displacing in this direction 10 percent of the length in that axis and then what's going on inside here would be connected using a constraint equation so constraint equation using a star equation option and this will be one minus one the set name would be now z front remember so z front and the displacement is rp with respect to reference point three in the third axis so again, what's going on here is transferred to that system. And then we'll create a history output for that. So the reference point three history output, okay, as a set. So reference point three are F3 and U3 is what we'll need. So this way we have all three uniaxial cases and we can then create the loading for them. So, so if we create here, so this will be job. So job uniaxial X, so we'll create the job submit all those job and look at the results in the next video we're going to show you how to set up the system for in-plane shear simulation so let's watch out for that and if you're interested in this kind of video do subscribe to this channel so when contents like this are made you'll be the first to see thank you for your interest in this channel and watch this video next